Welcome ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most underrated Nintendo games ever created. That's right, today we're going to be talking about Pikmin. Now you may have seen him in your Smash roster, but you'd probably never heard of Captain Olimar or Pikmin before then. Pikmin's a story about Captain Olimar who crashes his spaceship on a post-apocalyptic version of Earth and is able to return home by enlisting to the help of the native Pikmin. The Pikmin are incredibly helpful little plant creatures that help him carry his ship parts and battle monsters for him. In Pikmin 2, Captain Olimar returns to Earth and befriends the Pikmin once again, but this time to find some treasures. Uh, Pikmin is one of the best Nintendo games I can remember playing as a kid, and it's also one of the more emotionally scarring ones, actually. If you can look past the fact that humans are seemingly extinct and Olimar is only picking up traces of what's left of them, there's always the part where you're constantly leading legions of cute little Pikmin to their deaths as you battle your way through monsters. But overall, I think Pikmin is an excellent game, and I think Captain Olimar deserves a drawing today. Alright, so we're going to use this old sketch I found of Olimar a while back, and we're just going to transpose it on a new piece of paper. We're going to do that by just placing it over the top and securing it with paper clips. Then we're going to hold it up to a light source and just trace it onto a nice piece of cardstock that we can use to uh, make the new drawing. All right, and now that we've got the new drawing traced, we just got Captain Olimar in there. We don't have that spooky-looking Pikmin in there no more. And we can just, uh, you know, we're just going to clean up some lines, make sure it looks a little bit more like the original, fix some things, you know, make sure everything is in order, and then we can begin to uh, ink it in. And now you just want to be really careful. I'm using a Micron 0 .05 millimeter, very thin pen. You know, not the thinnest, but it's very good. Doesn't bleed a whole lot, especially on cardstock. Now, when you're drawing, you want to make very decisive movements like that. And you want to make sure, you don't want to hesitate, otherwise the, the ink starts to ball up in one spot. And you don't want that. So, you just want to be really, really careful, especially when you're moving your hand around, because this ink will bleed very, very easily. So, make sure you're making quick, decisive movements so that it doesn't ball up. Make sure not to smear the ink at all. Then we're just going to ink in all the little areas. We're going to ink in the buttons. We're going to ink in this little control panel. And then eventually we're going to get to this arm. It's pointed out a little bit more. You just want to be careful. This this is kind of going to be a focal point. Is a, is kind of pointer finger. So just make sure that looks good. Uh, we're going to leave a little gap in between where the helmet is going to be. Because we're going to do something a little different. We're not going to ink that in with pen. Um, and again, just be careful, make decisive line movements, uh, and uh, there are spots where you can pause, like right here and by the hair, you don't have to keep going with the head, just make sure, you, you, you want to make it one solid movement. See there, I didn't quite make it in one movement, and there's a little bit of a blip right above his, uh, right, above his right eye, just below the hair, and that's what you want to avoid if you want to get those kind of crisp lines that look real good. Now we're just going to blacken his eyes. His eyes are solid black anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and I'll get to the other one eventually. Ah, here we go. And then uh, that looks pretty good. Everything's looking pretty fine. We're going to draw his little antenna. That's going to be uh, that's going to be attached to the the helmet, which we're going to do something a little different with. We're not, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, we're not inking the helmet in with uh, with black ink. Alright, so now we're going to try something I've never really tried before, so it's going to be a little bit of an experiment. I'm pretty excited to try it. Instead of just uh, drawing the helmet in, inking it in, we're actually just going to try and draw it uh, with only markers, so it looks a little more translucent. That that was a little bit too big. Uh, so, we're, we're going to practice off of the side. I mean, it's it's... If you're doing something you've never tried before with drawing, it's always a good idea to experiment on a, on a, pe on a, on a similar piece of paper before you just try and rage in, in there and, uh, and, uh, and go for it. So we're using, again, cerulean blue, and we're just going to make very light lines. We're kind of trying to make his helmet look a little bit like a fishbowl, trying to make it look a little bit reflective, but, you know, it's, it's going to end up looking cartoony anyway. So just a few lines, a little bit random. Um, and then you just want to make sure that a little bit of a disconnect to kind of show a little bit of a reflection. Keep things light on top, 
and this this practice drawing obviously doesn't matter so if you mess up it doesn't matter the only thing that matters is when we actually try and draw it on Olimar himself so uh, just get creative with it try new things uh, see what works see what doesn't um, but ultimately this practice doesn't matter try and make it look a little look a little random you know Re reflections are like that you want to make sure it's a little splotchy in some places and a little clear and crisp in others and we're gonna try and add uh, some slit blue slate now to try and darken some areas just so it's not one flat color just to add some depth to it some sh shadowing and shading uh, just to make it look a little better and uh, you know what it's turning out pretty good so now I think we're about ready to move on and try it on Olimar for real. So this is where it really does matter. You don't want to mess up here. So again, we've got blue cerulean, and we're just going to move right in, right in on the side, and then we're going to just very carefully, you know, create some random lines in there. Just, just get creative with it. Whatever reflective surfaces you, if you have a fish pole handy, look at it. See what it looks like mason jar reflections are kind of random like that so kind of a little splotchy some little random spots just to make it look reflective we're trying to make it look like glass I mean all of ours helmets essentially a giant fishbowl anyway so uh, just gotta be careful try not to stray too close to his head or too close to the bottom of his face we want to keep those areas very clear because we want this to look like its own deal we don't want it to interfere with the rest of the drawing and now we're gonna add some blue splate and again you might notice I'm turning it I'm turning the page don't be afraid to turn the page to get the best angle yeah, I, I think that's a fly made in a previous video you it is just not turning the the picture enough to get the angle that's best for the lines and drawings you're trying to make now just clean up and erase some and uh, I think we're about ready to move on to all of our stuff I think that helmet is looking uh, pretty good I'm also going to add s some bands around his wrists I decided that last minute I don't want a suit to be too detailed if you've seen pictures of Olimar before his suit has a lot more detail some stitching that I really wasn't too excited to do anyway I wanted to keep things simple so we're going to use some brick beige for the the body his suit um, we're just gonna, you know, darken in that foot, shade in some areas a little early, and then we're gonna use the canary yellow just for some accents throughout the suit, just to add a little bit more color than we had before, just to make it look nice. Now we're gonna apply some canary yellow, or <laughs> excuse me, crimson red to the bottom of his shoe, and add some Tuscan red just for a little bit of shadow. Then we're going to move on, add a little bit more detail to the suit. You know, we're still trying to keep things very simple. There's a lot of stitching involved in his suit that I really wasn't very eager to draw. So we're just going to keep things nice and simple. And just go ahead with the brick beige and just color in the whole suit. Lay down a nice base layer. And then once we're done, we'll come back over it with the brick beige again just to add some shadows like I'm doing right now. Just applying some shadows underneath the armpit. And adding some again some more canary yellow for those accents that are gonna end up looking really nice just make the picture pop a little bit more again adding another layer of brick beige underneath we can uh, begin to bring some shadows out in, in a suit um, we might we're gonna add some uh, goldenrod later to darken those shadows even further but for now we're just laying down these layers of big brick geez I cannot speak brick beige uh, just all along the suit just one layer and then add another layer for shadowing and uh, we again you gotta let the ink dry before you can add another layer otherwise it just kinda all starts to blend together and look the same But again adding red and some Tuscan red underneath for the, the, the soles of his shoes his gloves will be the same color to just kind of keep that kind of color continuity throughout the thing and uh, if you can't tell the the light source I usually draw a circle for the light source we might not be able to see it is coming from the right side so all of the shadows are gonna be on the left like on his left foot and on the left side of his body 
Uh, right there, I use true blue on the buttons. Those are simple, just little blue circles, nothing special about them. And then uh, we're just going to tag that little monitor thing he's got on his chest with some blue slate as well. Then this little flap, we're just going to go brick beige, plain and simple. Don't think we're going to touch it again. And here we go with the golden rod. We're going to add some, just a, just a little bit of a deeper shadow, just to bring out some contrast. It's going to make the the whole picture pop a bit more, make it look a little more 3D than it was and than it did before. And I think it uh, and it blends really nice with the brick beige, which is also very nice. I really like that. All right, now we're going to add the red of his gloves. These are the parts that are going to pop uh, on the final product. Uh, we're going to add the red and the Tuscan red just to you know add some shadows onto his fingers, make him stand out a bit more. That hand doesn't really matter. Not as important. Now this hand is more of the focal point. This this hand we're going to pay a little more attention to. Now we're good, just only going to leave a base layer on his index finger, but we're going to darken all the area around it so it stands out. It's a lighter red. It's a lighter crimson red. And then we're going to add Tuscan red kind of around it and below it to try and add emphasis that it on, on, uh, put that emphasis on his pointer finger, so to speak. All right, and then he's just got a little red backpack on there. I mean, it's just a square. I mean, not much you can do with it. We're going to add a little bit of shading to it, I guess. Kind of darken it. It's in the background. It doesn't really matter to me. And just add in a little bit more golden rods and brick beige to his suit just to kind of darken it out. Kind of make it stand out a little bit more. Make it look a little nicer. And it's looking pretty good. I think, I think, I think we are ready to move on to his head. I was wrong. We're still working on the arm. All right, now we go. I added that line just to add a little bit more emphasis to his ear, and we're just going to cover all of Olimar's head, light, just a single layer of light peach. Now, keep in mind, especially the dark spots like his eyes and his mouth, it, they they tend not to bleed, but they can, especially when there's a lot of ink down. So be careful. Try and draw around those with the marker. The markers are very, very wet and they will cause ink to bleed, especially when it's balled up in areas like the mouth and eyes right there. So just added some more layers of light peach. We're just going to try and create some shadows around his head and around his giant nose. Trying to make it look more spherical. Give him a, give him a big old spherical pumpkin head. And then we're just going to keep going. Um, add in some more shading. You just want to keep it very round. Uh, and then the hair is just sienna round, but the tips and the roots are a darker brown with a little bit of sienna brown in between. It's kind of a cool feature I noticed about him while I was uh, while I was studying our, all of our in preparation for this drawing. It looks very good. We're going to add a little bit of peach in the ear just to you know draw a little bit of attention to it just so it doesn't look so plain. And then all of his nose is peach, just a single layer of peach. Then we're actually going to go in with pink. Just pure, pure, simple pink. And we are just going to blend that right in with peach again, just to kind of make his nose look more round with a little bit of a shine to it. All right, and now we're experimenting again. So that's a little ball of peach, and this is going to be the light on top of his antenna. So that little ball of peach is surrounded by little lines of crimson red. And we're just going to try it for reals up here. A little ball of that peach color. And then we go for the crimson red. Just keep the lines random. Never have lines next to each other that are the same length. Then that blue slate is going to go on his little bib right there. Just to add a little bit more color down there. And I think we're done. Looks pretty good. Turned out great, actually. Really proud. I think we did him some justice. And of course, once again, please like the video if you enjoyed. And feel free to comment ideas, drawing ideas. I'd love to draw what you guys wanting to see. So uh, uh, that's all I've got for you, and I'll see you next week. Adios.